Miami-Dade County is a large community. We serve over 2,250 square miles, about 90 miles of coastline. We operate the Bell 412, which we have four of. Um, we have two bases in the county, one in the north end of the county and one in the south end of the county. And we have a lot of boating activity, water sports in the weekends. You can have thousands of vessels out there. Miami Day Day Rescue is capable of performing a lot of different types of operations. We have a hoist which allows us to do strop rescue, basket, and stokes. We have aerial firefighting capabilities using either a Bambi bucket or a simplex tank. We also do all the medical transport calls for Miami Dade County, down into Monroe County, and occasionally we've gone into Broward County as well. The main factors that would impact our ability to do the job is the type of injury we're responding to. If we have no spinal cord compromise, we can probably rescue the victim or the patient with a simple strop or a diver deployment as opposed to a Stokes evolution. If you have a spinal cord compromise then you're probably going to deploy with a Stokes basket to make sure the patient is fully immobilized prior to loading them onto the aircraft. So being able to hoist them is a, is a great asset because it, 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 it's very smooth. The helicopter flight is much smoother than any boat ride or road ride would be. So hoisting off the fire boat, the pilot of the boat and the pilot of the aircraft have to be in communication as far as the direction in which the boat is going to be and the direction in which the aircraft is going to be. So what we'll do is we'll approach the boat as we're getting closer. The right side of Flight Medic will be lowering the, the hook and coordinating with the pilot so that the approach of the aircraft to the back of the boat and the hook reaching the surface is timed out so as soon as the hook is within reaching distance, they're able to catch it with the grounding hook and that grounds the cable so they won't get shocked from the static electricity that's carried by the system as it's lowered down. We'll attach the hook to the Stokes basket. Endangerments are always entanglements. You know, we have weight limitations of six, no more than 600 pounds. If you get entangled and the aircraft can't recover, then you're going to have to lose the cable. As long as there's no entanglement, once the, the Stokes basket's attached, we'll raise up off the deck of the boat. The aircraft commander will, in coordination with the right-sided flight medic who is watching the operation closely, the aircraft commander is holding his hover references according to whatever he chose. We'll lift the Stokes off the deck and back and left. Keeps the Stokes in line with the skids. And then as it comes up, the right side of flight medic will step out, push it away from the skids so that it doesn't get caught, and then directs it inside, releases the tagline, the tagline goes away. It gets secured with some straps that we have inside. Once those clips are in place, the hook is bedded, the right side of flight medic goes through his uh, closing out checklist, the door gets closed and the patient gets transported. Most people are surprised when I tell them that the Everglades lights on fire. When we get deployed to a fire call, we will hoist up our Bambi bucket is usually our preferred equipment and we'll find a water source. There's a series of canals that section off large pieces of the Everglades and what lights on fire are those spaces in between where the sawgrass is very tall, it becomes very dry and then it ignites for various reasons and then we'll do various lines trying to keep the fires away from whatever the structure is that we're trying to protect. Approximately 80% of our calls are scene calls, and it's usually requested by the ground units on scene who deem that air transport would be beneficial to the patient due to the distance or the time it would take to get to the trauma center. Typically, uh, the fire side of the aircraft will communicate with the ground units and coordinate a landing strip. We'll fly out to the landing zone, do a, an aerial recon, make sure that there's no wires or obstructions or, or we're not going to blow anything away and everything's good, we'll land. One of us will get out of the helicopter and walk over to the ground rescue. They exchange information and then walk them on the stretcher out to the helicopter, load them up and fly them to the hospital. Bell 412 has been an excellent helicopter for us. We've, had, we've been working out of a Bell 412 platform for many years. It's a large aircraft. We're always set up for two patient transports. It gives us that extra room inside to do what we do for patient care in the back. Also, it's a very good platform for hoisting and all the other special operations we do. This job is rewarding because we're able to help a lot of people. Uh, it's a good feeling knowing that you got that person whatever kind of medical attention they need as quickly as possible and to the best of your abilities. Uh, I also enjoy using all of the different tools. We get to do hoists, we get to do external loads, we get to land in uh, challenging places off airport. You don't get bored with it. You never know what to expect. And we get to use all the fun tools in order to do it. All my favorite calls are what we would consider be an inert survivor. We get to fly out somewhere where somebody's stranded. They're not injured. They're not sick. They're just stuck. 
So nobody's hurt. There's no, there's, this is a happy ending call all the way around. And I get to be the, the one who gets the hand, give them the hand and say, come on, we're good. Most of the reason why people do this position is because you get to see people at their worst point in their life. And to be able to deliver somebody to the hospital and see them walk out of it, you get personal satisfaction that you were involved in saving this person's life. So when you can close that circle and make contact with that person, whether it be six months or a year down the road, that's where I think we get all our satisfaction.